This is a video review of Shoutmon, Ballistamon, and Rulamon from Digimon Fusion. Digimon Fusion is the US version of a Japanese show called Digimon Cross Wars. It included all these same characters with their same names, so Shoutmon, Ballistamon, and Rulamon. Uh, the, the difference is that the toys are different. The Japanese figures are drastically different than what we got here, and uh, I do have those on the way, and when I get them, I'll compare them to these guys. I don't know when they'll get here. Um, it might be a while yet since they're coming from Korea, but either way, on to the US versions of the figures, and they're really not that bad. They're, they have some problems, but they're not bad. First we have Shoutmon, and I like this little guy. He's pretty simple because there's not much he can do, but he looks nice. He looks very show accurate. I really like his head sculpt. Like they even uh, got his um, the headphones he wears, and then his crest, and then his eyes in there. His eyes are painted really nicely, and then I don't know how you, I don't know how well you can see this because my camera does not like to pick up red. But he also has his uh, toothy mouth here. Now for articulation, the head can rotate around 360. And it doesn't get much more than that, but you can do some um, emote posing. But like, you can't look up without the head coming off or down. Uh, but you can get him to um, go like, oh, what's going on? For the arms, they go back a lot. They go forward a fair amount. And you go in and out this much, and they can rotate. The arms are kind of interesting because they're on a ball joint like this where it's facing backwards, so you don't, it doesn't look like you would get much forward motion, but because the actual arm is bent, when you move it forward, it actually goes forward a fair amount. Not as much as I would like, but it's a um, decent solution for how they uh, chose to place the ball joints. The legs are pretty pathetic, though. They move around like this, and they can rotate, so there's almost nothing you can do with the legs. Uh, by himself, Shopmon's not that great of a toy, but he's not bad. If you just like the character and would like to have a... Um, Chapman on your desk or something, I would recommend him. Next we have Ballistamon, and Ballistamon is actually quite nice. He's a uh, thick, chunky little dude, and he should be bigger than Chapman. Like, Chapman is supposed to ride inside this guy for uh, Chapman times two, but um, as you can see, that's not really possible here. Um, I really like the articulation you get on this guy's head. It's about the same as you get on Chapman's head, but uh, it's a bit more expressive, like he actually looks like he's asking a question. He just gets a little bit more tilt than Chapman had. Then the arms go around 360, they go in and out, and um, that's about it. They can rotate at the wrist a little bit. There's not much you can do with these arms like this. There is something that you can do with the arms to improve them later on. I'll show you when we get to Drilumon. But until then, uh, yeah, the only other bit that you can do is move the legs like this, and the legs are kind of pathetic. Uh, just like with Shotmon. Now one problem I do have with this figure is that this horn will come off very easily. Now I'm not sure why it's not just molded into one piece. And it's kind of annoying to have to keep pressing it back on because it comes off so easy. Now to form Shotmon times 2 is uh, kind of sad. You, you uh, put this guy's head on his chest like this. And then you take Shotmon, you pop off his crest. And take the sword out. And then you take Shaman, leave him to the side, put the crest on like this, give the sword to Ballistamon, and this is Shaman times two. Yeah, this looks really, really bad. I mean, it only vaguely looks like what you see in the show, and it's it's just really pathetic what they did here. I mean, it's it's nice you can actually do Shaman times two because you can tell that. The toy designers did not care about this mode at all. Almost all of the engineering went to Shatmon times, times three and times four. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit when uh, we get to Shatmon times three, and then I talk about the sword. Okay, so now we have Ballistamon like this. I'll take this out. I'll put them off to the side. This is the, uh, one of the next steps that we'll need to go to to make uh, the next version of Shatmon. But for now, let's look at Drulumon. Drulumon is in some ways the weakest of the bunch, and in some ways the strongest. He's the weakest of the bunch because he looks terrible because he has this huge gap in here. Now, thankfully, it does not go all the way through, but it's kind of ugly, and you can just tell he's a bit too wide. The head looks up a little bit too much, and the tail is too long, and the tail is obviously a bunch of ball joints. He obviously looks like he's going to turn into legs with these. Now, the Japanese version of the story is basically the same with that, but it's not quite as bad. It looks more streamlined. So... 
That's how this guy's bad. How he's good, though, is opposability, because he gets lots of opposability in the legs here and here. You can even get some rotation out to the side. And then you get some uh, foot articulation down here. You can get a little bit of head articulation, a little bit of wiggle, but that's about it. And then the tail is basically free. You can move it however you want. So this is Drillumon. And now to combine this guy with uh, the other two, uh, Ballistamon and Shopmon, what we're going to do is we're going to need to take this guy apart almost completely. Pop this off. Pop this off. Pop this off. Put this on back here. Pop these off. Pop these off. Yeah, th this is a very long process, and it's very annoying, too. We're just popping everything off. Pop the head off. And then pop the um, combined head off for the bottom of Durilumon's head. And then this part right here is actually kind of interesting. This is the ball joint that uh, Durilumon's head connected to. Now, the ball joint is actually two halves. You see, it's part of uh, this leg and part of this leg. Then you'll pop these off, and now we can get into the long process of combining. What you want to do is you want to take one of the legs, and then you want to take one of the front legs here, and you want to find the one that has the ball joint that's facing into this curve right here, where the foot is facing the same direction as this foot. What will happen is that there is a little peg in here. I'll go into the little um, peg hole right here in the leg, and then this will clip around the ankle, and then this will use this as a, that ball joint will be um, used as a guide with this to make sure everything goes in properly. So after you do that, you will just snap it in like that, put it off to the side. Do the same with the other leg, and pop it in like this, put it off to the side. Well, actually, uh, we can uh, continue putting the legs together. Um, this is the right leg, so take the right thigh, put it together. Take the other thigh, put it together like this. Then you will take this, and this is the pelvis, and you will attach the legs on like this. And here are the lower legs. Now, officially, these little bits right here are supposed to just stay off to the side. They aren't supposed to do anything, but I like to attach them to the side of the legs like this. It uh, helps make sure that all the parts are actually used. So here are the legs. We'll put these off to the side for now. Next, we need to look at Ballistamon. Take this off. Or take these up. Then we'll take off his arms at the elbow. And then what we'll do is we will take these parts from Derulamon's tail, put them in to increase the length of the arms. Like this. And one thing before we actually move on, this is how I actually prefer my Ballistamon, like this, because this way he has much longer arms. And he's supposed to have really long arms in the show, so this I actually consider to be more show accurate. And part of the reason why I also do this is it means there's less ball joints that you have to take apart and put back together, which means that the longevity of the figure will be longer. So this is how I prefer Ballistamon. It also makes the combination sequence much, much less annoying. So that's how I keep my ballistam on. Uh, you can do whatever you want, but I recommend doing this. Anyway, you'll turn the feet back around like this, give him the longer arms, and then you'll rotate him so that his belly button here is facing down. Now take his head and put it onto his left shoulder like this. Then you'll take the Rulumon's head, put it onto the right shoulder like this. Take the legs, pop them down like this onto the torso. You'll take the head here, and then you might notice something kind of funny here. We still have a complete Shoutmon left over, and this is supposed to be Shoutmon times three. The only part of Shoutmon you actually use is the crest, and you use the crest to cover up this uh, uninipple here on Shoutmon times three's chest. Now this is Shoutmon times three. The difference between Shoutmon times three and times four is times three does not use the Pikmon sword. So uh, Shoutmon times three digivolves to Shoutmon times four. That is the lamest. I know in Digimon Fusion and Cross Wars is not actually a digivolution, but it's the lamest digivolution I've ever seen. So. Basically, if you don't want to get Shoutmon, and you, but you still want to experience Shoutmon times three, basically, even though you won't have the uh, V-Crest here, you don't have to get Shoutmon. You can just get Ballistamon and Derulamon, which is 
Kind of a shame. I wish this guy actually integrated more into the combination, but I see why they did it the way they did. If uh, this guy were to integrate into these guys, he would have to be really small. And it'd be hard to justify the price point of these figures, which is about $8 per figure, if um, Chapman were this tall. So I get why they did it this way. It's disappointing, but I understand it. So put this guy out to the side and look at Shotman times four himself. And this figure is actually quite cool. I like him quite a bit. Um, I, I like the look of him. Uh, this is a little bit wobbly and a bit too big, I think. But it is otherwise a very nice looking figure. And I was surprised because I, especially with the way Derulamon looked, I didn't think that this combination would look as good as it does. And now for articulation, the head can go around 360 and it can look up and down, so it's a very articulate head. The arms can go around 360, then go in and out, rotate above the elbow, rotate below the elbow so you get some wrist articulation, and then you can bend at the elbow. So the arms are very nice, and so is the head. The legs aren't quite as nice, um, because this goes up so high and you have these drill bits from Jerudelumon's thighs, um, they bump into the a torso bit up here so his legs are quite limited and because his uh, thigh goes up so high you also can't get much spread like this. If you really need to spread the legs you need to do it at the knee and give him knocked knees which is kind of unfortunate. I wish they had found a better solution and really there's no reason why they couldn't have found a better solution because all they had to do is make this um, come down to like right here so because obviously they didn't care about Jerulumon enough to make him look really nice so I don't know why they didn't make this one concession, one more concession for Derulo Mountain to make Shout Mon times four look really nice or work really nicely. So the legs go forward, back, and out a little bit. You get a knee here, and because of the way the knee is situated, you also get a little bit of a thigh swivel. It doesn't quite work as well as you might think. And then you also have the uh, waist swivel here that go around uh, 360, although the tail will bump into stuff, and it can lean forward and back a little bit. So. I was not expecting this combination to have as much posability as it does. I was expecting it to be a very um, clunky and kind of hodgepodge type thing. But the overall final combination of Shoutmon times 4 is not bad at all. It actually works quite well, minus the leg problem. So, do I recommend this set? I don't know. It depends on if you like Digimon Fusion or Digimon Cross Wars. It also depends on if you want to buy these guys, or if you want to spend the extra bling you need for... Uh, the Japanese versions. If you just want a version of this toy, say, on your desk, and you're not, you don't care too much about playing with them that much, or the combination, like if the perfect combination that the Japanese figures have, I say perfect combination, even though uh, it's still a parts former, uh, basically, I mean, it doesn't leave Shoutmon off to the side. If that's valuable to you, I might get the Japanese versions instead. I don't know, because I have not played with them yet. If you just want a representation of the character though, then this is fine. It it looks good. It's surprisingly uh, well built. Like It moves around a little bit if you shake it, but not too bad. It's it's surprisingly sorry, surprisingly well made in spite of the flaw of Shoutmon. So for kids, I would definitely recommend this. For adult collectors, uh, it, it really just depends on what you're looking for. Anyway, I review Digimon figures, Power Ranger figures, Transformers figures, lots of stuff like that. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. Be sure to check out our Facebook link down below, and thank you for watching.